Ooh, that looks tasty. This will not be the end. I will have his blood. His skin will boil. And his eyes will melt from the inside. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Day the Hungry Gamer is back with another game review. And today we are talking about Triora from Arcano Games and designed by Michael C. Alvin. And thank you to Manic Mark for the voiceover introduction. And before I get into it, please make sure you turn on your Klingon subtitles, because if I make a mistake in brief rules explanation that I give, that is where you will find the corrections. So Triora is a Euro game in which you are all witches trying to take your revenge on the city who burned the witch mother for being, wait for it, a witch. Now, she was a witch, and it's unclear if you were actually doing evil witchy things or this is just the Inquisition being the Inquisition. But in any event, after she has been burned, now all the witches are saying, well, you burned one of us for doing evil things, so now we're really gonna do some evil things and you are setting out to destroy the town, and whoever destroys it the best will be the new coven leader. Now, if you are not at all interested in how this game works, you want to jump ahead to the timestamp on the screen right now. And for those of us still here, let me tell you what it is you're looking at. So we have our main board, which is underneath this character board here. Let me slide that away for a second. And that is your worker placement portion of the game. Over here, there are all the townsfolk that you can corrupt. Up here, we have our Inquisition Tracker. If someone ever gets all the way up here and the Inquisitor right here winds up on the same space as you, you are caught, you are burned, you lose, and then all the other players immediately score their points. This here, is your doom points or your victory points. Down here, some in-game scoring stuff. Up here is a rough guide to how each turn works. And this here is where you bid for your turn order. Now, I will explain all of that in just a moment, but first I want to start out and I want to explain the character board because the character board has its own little mini game that's going on. In order to do pretty much anything on the main game board, which results in you slowly destroying different sections of the city and the surrounding area, and I will say that's also the other way the game ends, when depending on how many players you have, when you have destroyed enough areas of the city, then the game will also end, and you track that here by putting your tokens down as you play. And if you're two players, then you only have three to destroy. Three players, there's four to destroy. And with four players, there are five different places that need to be destroyed. But this here is how you are brewing your potions. And I will say that every time your witch moves, you get to do a brew action. And there are other ways and locations that will get you more brew actions. That doesn't matter at the moment. Again, I will explain that in just a bit. So what we have here is you have a closed economy of resources that you have that you can use to brew. And these are your different herbs. And if you take a look over here, you'll see that there are different herbs that you need to use to create these potions. So if I want to create two ambitious potions, I can use two red and two blue, that'll get me two, or one and one will get me one, and I can do that with a single brew action. All your herbs over here are the ones that are harvested and ready to go. So, let's say I have a single brew action. I could use one green and one blue, right there, and make one of these potions just like that. And now I have one, and I will show you later how to use them. Then, if I had another cauldron, I could brew something else. So here I have two of these, so I will use two yellow and two red and create two molestum potions, just like that. Okay, that's all very simple. 
Now, as you're going around the board, one of the other things you're looking for are shovels. And what these shovels do is they allow you to plant the seeds from the herbs that you have used. So you use these herbs, you harvest the seeds, and for each shovel, you're able to bring down a single herb. Or you can take herbs that are already back in the ground, and I'll explain how that happens later on, and I've grown a little bit, for each shovel, you can harvest one, so now you have access to those herbs to brew more potions later on. Then, after you've gone through the entire phase of the game up here, everyone's taken all of their movement and all of their actions, you wind up moving the Inquisitor, you move the Ghost of the Witch Mother, and then it goes from day to night, or night to day, whatever. And then all of your herbs here that are planted move over there and they have grown. So that is how you brew potions. And I'll say, you never get more herbs. You start with this many and you never get more. It is a closed little herb economy there. Now, and you'll see again, all the potions here that you can brew and how many you can have. Now I'm gonna move this off the board so we can see how the worker placement part of the game works. What you'll see out here is I just have two witches out, is there are witches and there are witch familiars. And the witches are slightly more powerful. You will get slightly better things. And as I've already said, every time you use a witch, you get to do a brew action, which you do not get to do for your familiar. Now, what you do at the beginning of each round is each player gets to bid on how soon they want to act. And I will say that at the beginning of the game, your witches and your familiars are off the board and you just get to place them out. I will also say now that the path here only matters for the ghost of the Coven Mother and the Inquisitor. They follow the paths, the witches and familiars, you can show up wherever you want. But at the beginning of the game, you have to bid for your turn order. And so this is actually where you start the first turn and then you just cycle around through there over and over again. So what we have here is if you want to go first, you can do that. But your Inquisition rating is going to go up by one. That's just... The penalty for going first, you're making yourself seen, making yourself known. If you wanted to go second, you would immediately get two shovels. So as I told you, you can use that to plant herbs or harvest herbs. If you go third, you're going to get a coin, and your inquisition goes down by one. If you go fourth, you get two shovels, and you go down by two, and you get the idea. Then what happens next is you get to place your workers. And all of these locations can have a single witch or familiar in them. The only exception is the forest here, which has space for five witches or familiars. And I will say that the Inquisitor can never go there. You'll see that symbol right there. And so if you place a familiar somewhere, so when you place your familiar, if there is not a potion marked there, you're going to get to take the action that is above the line. And you can just do that for free. So for example, this one here, I would have the opportunity to corrupt a townsfolk. And again, you look on there and it tells you what resources you need to do that. And for that, I would gain three inquisition as well. Or I could come here into the forest and I would just immediately gain a doom point and I would get three shovels. Come over here, I get to brew two times. I can turn coins into herbs that I need. And you get the idea. The witch, if your witch winds up at one of these places, they get the top and they also get the bottom as well. I will also say that witches can share locations with another witch. A familiar cannot do that. And if, let's say, red was already here, 
So they've already gotten to do that, that, and that. And then green came here also. Green would get to do that, that, and that. And then red would get to do that again. And that is fairly self-explanatory, though of course there are lots that go on with that. Now, all of these here that have these potion symbols on there, in order to do anything there, you have to go there and you just have to spend that potion in order to do it. Some have this little symbol right here, and that is a zombie, which is a resource that you can get here. So if you come here and you spend one of those potions and you're the witch, you would come out of there with three zombies. And those, in some cases, can be used instead of potions. It's just another resource that you can get. Now, otherwise, no matter which one I spend, here, in this case, I get a choice. The first thing here is this symbol tells me that this section is partially ruined. And then I would get to choose which one of these two bonuses I get. Do I want two money, seven points, and four inquisition? Or do I want to attempt to corrupt a single townsfolk, four points, and four inquisition? And then, of course, if I'm a witch, I would get an additional two there. And all of that, you should understand how it's going to work. The other things that matter are here is the castle. And in the castle, it's a little more complicated. So when you activate a space, you have to go over in this order. And first off, you have to bribe the guards to get into the castle. So you have to pay that much. Then, if you use one of these potions, you take the top action here, which gets you a few points and reduces your Inquisition score significantly or you use one of these down here, which will be increasing your Inquisition score and giving you significantly more points. And then after you have done so, you place your token down at the bottom. And that matters because there is a limited number of times that you can do it. And depending on who has done the game, the most of those points at the end of the game, you get bonus Doom points as you go. And the other location that I need to talk about is this one here in the middle. And this one is slightly complicated, but not overly. And so what's happening here is you are spending resources, and it tells you what you can spend here to move that token one space. So if you move it to here, you get four shovels. Four points, four shovels, two brews, minus four inquisition, and so on as you go around. And if your witch is there, you have the option of hopping some and this just kind of goes around and around whoever decides to use it. So after you have done all of that, and both witches, or all of the witches, I should say, and the familiars have gone wherever it is that they're going to go, maybe they've collected some of these, you would move into the rest of the phase. The first thing that happens is the Inquisitor moves. Now the Inquisitor is going to move two spaces and they're going to move towards whichever witch has the highest Inquisition rating. So in this case, red. So it would move one, two, and he found her. If you look here, it says if the Inquisitor finds the witch, you gain that much Inquisition. Now, just for sake of argument, let's say that I was here and my familiar was there, was doing the sacrifice. Well, the Inquisitor is still coming towards red, because red's higher, but it only caught the Inquisitor, and you'll see that means that the red would get two more Inquisition. Then we move to the Ghost of the Coven Leader, and she moves towards the Witch with the lowest Inquisition score. So, and again, she would also move two, and would move here, and you'll see that green has a choice. They can get five points and three Inquisition, or three Inquisition and three Shovels. And that's how that works. Then you move into the change of the phase, which is when, if you recall, that is when that happens. Then you move into any bonuses that you get for your people. And you'll see here that I would get minus two Inquisition for having claimed that particular person. And then this would all move up 
And now we have access to that person, and a new one would come out. And then we would go back into the bidding would start again, and so on. And I've already explained how the game ends. When you do get to the end of the game, Scoring is pretty simple. You have however far up the track you have gotten. Then you start to look here. The person who ruined the most spaces would get 10 points. Second, six, third, three, fourth, zero. Then the person with the most inquisition would lose 24 points. Second most, 16, and so on. Then you look at these things here. And again, you have a chart that tells you how that works. And then you would look down here and then for sets of villagers, that if you have a set of two, you get three points. Set of three, nine points. Set of four, 18 points. And then you see who has the most points. And that is how this game works. So what do I like about this game? Well, I will say I love this right here. I really enjoy this closed economy of creating your potions and moving those around. I just think it's fantastic. It's a really, to me, novel way to deal with your resource gathering and resource management. It's great. I love it. I'll also say that these little boards are great. I like these little potions here that kind of move up and down as you're tracking what you've made. It's great. Things fantastic, great player board. I'll also say this game does have some very clever mechanics to it. I think this little circle sacrifice is very cool. I think it is a really kind of a wonderful little addition to the game. And I do like this idea that you are slowly destroying the places that you're using. Because once you've destroyed it, you can't use it anymore because it's been destroyed. And it adds a little bit of an urgency to the game because you have to move quickly. You can't just sit there and build up your supplies until you have everything you need because odds are things are going to be gone. And I think that is really clever. And I also think this area here is very clever. I love that you have the option. Which one are you going to do? And it's thematic. It fits. This is your charming people, so they're going to think that you are less evil than you are, or you're going to curse people down here. Well, that's worth more points, but that's going to make people come after you. I think that is all really clever. I love the addition of the familiars, which gives you two workers that you're running around. I'll also say in a two-person game, you get a second familiar on each player, so you have more options. And I like the thematicness of having the Inquisitor kind of running around and trying to catch you doing something wrong and they're gathering information about you and then of course if you're all the way at the top and then they catch you well then the game's over and i love that that is a choice i think that is fantastic that that can actually happen and then to go along with it i think it's a, a nice little bonus of the coven mother that's also out there and giving you bonuses but again it also kind of hurts you because it's raising your inquisition and I talked a little bit about the theme already, and so I'll continue with that. I think this game does a good job of realizing its theme. I really do feel like I'm out there trying to get revenge and destroy this town, and I'm trying to escape the Inquisitor that's running around, and I'm cursing people, and I'm raising zombies up. I'm gonna take those zombies, and I'm gonna use those to come over here and destroy things, and. It's great. It's great. I will also say that the game, once you know how to play, plays quite quickly. So what are my quibbles with the game? Now, I've already praised the character board, and I like the little familiar meeples and witch bulls or whatever. I will say I was a little bit disappointed with these. These are silver coins, and I mean, I get it, but eh, they're kind of disappointing, and the, the zombies here are also a little bit disappointing. Um, but that's, you know, it's not a huge deal, but it, they, they could have been really cool. I'll also say that this board is huge. I mean, it is massive, the amount of space it takes up. And maybe it needs to, but I don't know, it seems like it could have been compressed just a little bit. 
And I'll also add that there are a lot of icons that you have to learn. And it does take a little while. I mean, once you get it, it's not hard, but it definitely takes some time to learn all of those icons. And with that, I'll say that the rule book is not the best. The original printing of the rule book, they had an issue with their translation and they had to redo it. And the PDF that you can download is significantly better, but it's still not great. I still had a little bit of a hard time figuring out what was going on. I will also add that while I like the idea of corrupting the townsfolk, we found that it's really expensive to do. And you really have to commit to that strategy if you're going to do it. Of course, if you commit to that strategy, it might be to the detriment of other things you're doing. And so we found it's a little bit hard to integrate corrupting townsfolk into your strategy. I'm sure if I play more, I'll figure that out, but it's a little bit of a challenge there. Though I like the idea of it. But all those are minor. My only bigger quibble that I have with the game is I think that this part of the game is awesome. I love this part of the game. I think this part of the game is good and is a fine, solid worker placement. But this is great. And unfortunately, I feel like this is supporting this. And I wish that this supported this. I wish I got to spend more time doing this, dealing with this. And you don't get to spend more time with it because, as I said, it is a closed economy here. And you brew, well, it might be a little while before you can get enough shovels to get everything back up there. And so to me, that's a little bit of a letdown. But that's it, folks. That is Triora, City of Witches. I think if you are into worker placement games, if you're looking for something witchy, then this is certainly a good option. I think there is a lot of cool stuff going on. I really do feel like it does a good job of, of capturing its theme, a very good job of capturing its theme, I think, better than many Euro games that I have played. I think if you are interested in unique methods of resource gathering, and you like the idea of this kind of closed economy. I don't know another game that does it this well, and I think that's really, really cool. So there you have it, folks. That is Triora City of Witches. It is available now. If I made any mistakes in the brief explanation, please let me know with a timestamp in the comments, and I'll get that into the Klingon subtitles. As always, if you found this useful, please like, subscribe, share, Thank you so very much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.